there. He died on a cross. He, he, they, they cru- crucified him, but he never did anything wrong. He blessed little children. He loved people. He healed people. And he always went about doing good. That was the story of his life. But uh, one day, this little lady who lived in this house right here, uh, she touched him. She touched him. And she had this statue made of her and of Jesus so everybody could know that's exactly what this baptistry is. It's a statue. You say, hey, folks, I have touched him. I'm saved. And you tell people that you're saved by the, the picture of baptism. And that's why you're not right with God if you don't get baptized. You're ashamed of Jesus. I said, you're ashamed of Jesus. I said, you're ashamed of Jesus. I said, you're ashamed of Jesus. If you won't get baptized after you're saved. But this little lady had built it. But that here's a strange thing. Nicodemus. Nicodemus is one of the apoc- apocryphal books that's in the Catholic Bible not in what we call the Protestant Bible, not in the King James Bible. There's a book of the, of the Apocrypha called Nicodemus. And though it is not the inspired Word of God, it can be accurate history. And in Nicodemus' book in the Catholic Bible, the story is told that Jesus was walking up the way to the cross, those seven stops, you know, on that way to the cross. He was walking to Calvary. And on his way to, the, on his way to Calvary, you recall he... The, the, the cross was placed on him and he bent beneath the load of the cross and Nicodemus says and maybe he saw this I, I think he did it was Nicodemus who buried, buried Jesus don't you recall Nicodemus came with Joseph of Arimathea they took the body of Christ and put the put, and wrapped the body in linen and put it in the sepulcher Nicodemus saw him walk up there Nicodemus said all of a sudden Jesus bent beneath the load and he said, Out of the crowd, there shot a little lady. She reached for a handkerchief. She grabbed her handkerchief and she put his head in her arms and she wiped the blood and sweat and tears off his brow and told him that she had loved him. And he said, That was Veronica, the one who had pressed through months before just to get a touch of the hem of his garment. Let me ask you a question tonight. Have you touched him lately? Or you go to teenage soul winning, but have you touched Jesus lately? You go to all the youth activities, but have you touched Jesus lately? You're in the choir, but have you touched Jesus lately? I've often thought if I sang in the choir, I'd want to get alone several times a week and say, Oh, God, help me when I just sing a congregational song. Help me to do it out of praise and exaltation of Christ. I've often thought if I were an usher in a church like this, I'd want to jump up and down and shout back in the back and say, Hallelujah, glory to God. I'm, I'm honored to be an usher here. Oh, listen, if all you do is take up the offering, you can go alone and touch Jesus. I was thinking the other day in my office, I see everybody I can. Honestly, I do. There's no way in the world I could see any more people unless there were more than one person. But I can't see everybody. The other day I had appointments every 15 minutes scheduled all day. And a fellow came by and he said, Brother House, I've got to see you. I've got to see you. And I said, man, there's somebody in the office now. I can't right now. Brother House, I've got to see you. But I said, this fellow's had an appointment for three weeks. And I can't say, Brother House, it's an emergency. I said, okay, I'll see you when I can. Have a seat. It wasn't long. A little lady walked in. And she did have a burden. And she said, Brother Howell, I must see you. But I said, I have appointments all morning, all day, every 15 minutes. She said, I must, I've got to see you, Brother Howell. It's an emergency. I said, okay, have a seat. Well, as long as the family came by, and uh, three of them, and they said, Brother Howell, we've got to see you. And there I was with appointments every 15 minutes, and only one person, and folks outside waiting to get in. And when I got through that night, late at night, it must have been midnight, I said, Lord, I wish I could see everybody. I wish I could see everybody. And then it dawned on me. There's one who can. There's one who can. Nobody ever bowed on his knees and looked up to Jesus without getting an appointment immediately. Nobody ever reached out to touch his nail-scarred hand who didn't feel the touch of him immediately. Oh, blessed be God. I'm alone a lot. I fly a lot. The other night I was flying in a storm. It was about midnight. And I was flying in a storm. And the plane shook. And not many folks were on the plane. And, oh, I don't know where I was. It's been several months ago. But it was in a storm. 
And I got to thinking, nobody knows where I am. Nobody. Not a soul knows where I am right now. And then it dawned on me, oh yes, oh yes. I wish I could tell you the joy of touching him. I mean it. I'm not a great preacher, but I touch him sometimes. I touch him. I touch him. I want to be a good preacher, but I want to be a good Christian more than that. I want to touch Jesus. Just the touch of his garment. How long has it been since you touched him? Oh, I've been to church every Sunday for three years. How long has it been since you touched him? I sing in the choir. How, how long has it been since you touched him? I am a boy, deacon boy. How long has it been since you touched him? How long has it been? Somebody ought to say tonight, many somebodies, I'm saved, and I know I'm saved, but it's been so long since I prayed, and I knew I touched him. Dr. Tom Malone says, every day he reads the Bible and reads it. How long do you read it, Dr. Malone? He says, I read it every day until God speaks to my heart from his word. I'll close with this. Dr. Billings has said this. Jim Lyons used to say it often. Walt Hanford said it to me recently. Many folks have said it. One of our our fine deacons said it the other day in my office. They all said, Brother Hiles, God has given you a real gift of wisdom. Now, I don't mean to brag. It's not as much a gift as it is hanging around the giver. It's not so much a gift of wisdom as it is hanging around the giver. If I can touch him every day, then I can say to you, come in my office, I think I can help you. But you let me lose Jesus and the touch of Jesus for a while, and you won't get any help when you come in my office. Brother, he's the source. He's the source. Touch him. Touch him. Touch him. Touch him! Have you spent all? Touch Jesus! Are you here tonight and you're a sinner and you're not saved and you don't know you're going to heaven and you, you tried everything in the world? Touch Jesus.